Thank you, Bishop, for not cutting me off after I left. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, you're already standing, but if you open your Bibles to Luke 22, verse 20. Luke 22, verse 20. read it all together. The Bible says, likewise also the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the New Testament in my blood, which was shed for you. The title of this sermon comes from an old English phrase. So the title is, I am of the blood. I want you to repeat that with me. I am, I am. of the blood. But say it with some guts behind it. I am, I am of, the blood. of the blood. We're going to pray that God anoints me to preach, anoints you to receive. Then we're going to praise him one more time. But we're not going to give him some man be pan be praised. We're going to praise him as he's worthy to be praised. So raise your hands, raise your voice to the God, and let's pray. Raise your voice to the King of glory because only He is worthy. You may take your seats. In the year 1565, the Kingdom of Scotland was divided like never before by politics and different regimes trying to take over the country. Now you see, the previous queen, had, she had spent most of her life outside the country and without leadership and authority there. People just started rising up and doing what they wanted to do and, and forming factions and simply just dividing the country every which way they could. In that climate of division, in that climate of high politics, they crowned a new king. His name was James, and he was only 18 months old. You see, Scotland, like almost all of Europe, was divided by a class system. What you were born into is where you had to stay. There was a slave class, and the slaves were usually, in, in, in specifically in Scotland, usually a slave was a prisoner of war or somebody who couldn't pay their debts. They were considered lower than animals. Literally, if you had an ox and you had a slave, that ox had more value than that slave. If you were born of slaves, then you stayed a slave. On top of that class, there was a, the, the class of the common people. The common people are those who had to work and sweat for a living. Glory, hallelujah, amen. Am I talking to some common people here? Knows what it is to go work in the sun and break your back and all that. The common people weren't landowners. They could own possessions. They could own a home. They could own certain things, but they did not own land. They were subject to lords and ladies who were above them, which brings us to the next class, which was the noble class. You couldn't just one day decide, I'm going to be noble. No, you had to be born into that class. And, and it's kind of funny because things are the same as they are. You know, things really don't change. We change the way we talk about things and all. But, hey, that noble class was the people who owned the banks. <laughs> they owned the land. They owned the trade. So that made them special. They had titles that were passed down, lands that were passed down, wealth that was passed down. They were the ones who thought they were big time. And then on top of them, though, there was another class, the class of royalty. You couldn't just decide to be a king. You couldn't decide you were going to be a prince. You had to be born of that line. Your father had to be a king. You couldn't just one day decide, well, hey, you know what? I'm something special. No, you had to be born of the right father. You had to be born of the right lineage. You had to have the right blood flowing in your veins. And because of that, James, even just being a baby, not understanding what was happening around him, but simply for the blood that was in his body, 
received the crown at 18 months old. He was not worthy of that crown, but his blood made him worthy. He didn't accomplish anything to be worthy of that crown, but his blood made him worthy. As a boy, he stood in the court and had to be present at every governmental meeting. Because the thing is, he was just a boy and no, he didn't understand everything around him. But only he had authority and power. And if he didn't sign anything, nobody could make a law. That boy who didn't understand what was happening around him, if they didn't have his permission, they couldn't spend the money. Man, they, they couldn't make deals. They couldn't declare war. They couldn't move things without his sign and his seal. And the boy didn't know it. According to history, the nobleman knew, well, you know what? There's only one person in all this kingdom who has authority and who has power. There's only one that can make things happen, and it's the boy king. So the nobleman got close to him. First, according to the, the history, the, his specifically, because I know, you know, we live in the time of Google, and you're going to fact check, so you can go. Uh, uh, um, Tim Kelly, I believe, is the historian who recounted this part, that the nobleman would get close, and, and first they tried to approach him as a friend. And that, that was fine for a while, but after a while they started to intimidate the boy. They started to bully him. Literally, it got to the point they would physically shove him. The only one with the crown, but there he was, getting bullied, manipulated, so that they could fulfill their own plans and agendas. One historian recounts a tale that in the midst of the royal court that they were talking about going to declare war against France. Now, they had already been to war against France two times and lost. But they were talking about it again. And so the boy king stood up. He was about eight years old, nine years old. And he said, well, I don't think that's a good idea. And one of the noblemen walked up to him as he was there in his throne with his royal garments and crown on his head. And they just flat out gave him an open hand slap. They put the king in his place. James lived for years, submitted to things that were supposed to be submitted to him. He was subject to those who were supposed to be subject to him. About the age of 15, one day he was with his tutor. And forgive me, I'm going to paraphrase this conversation a little bit. But the tutor was teaching him about royal succession. He was teaching him about the class system, about the bloodline, and about only those who have a crown have authority. And only those who have the right blood can be king. James heard this lesson. And was there stupefied. He, he, he just couldn't understand. Wait, 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 wait. What are you saying? What are you trying to tell me? And, and again, I'm paraphrasing these questions a little bit. But he looked his teacher in the face and, and he asked, Are you trying to tell me that only a king has authority and power? That teacher said, yes. He, he, he asked, are you telling me? That, that everybody's supposed to be subject to the royalty? Teacher says, yes. All right, I, I, I get all that, but tell me, who else in Scotland has royal blood? Well, you know, you, your father left nobody. You, your mother didn't have any other family. There's no uncles, no aunts, no cousins, no nobody. You're the only one of royal blood in all the kingdom. That turned that light bulb on, and suddenly he suddenly realized who he was. He puffed out his chest and realized, no, 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 no. I've been kicked around, and I've been, had people trying to put me in my place, but no, I'm the big dog in the yard. I got authority and power, and that's why they're trying to get close to what I got. He called all the, all the noblemen together into the court and divided them up into two sections, more or less like, like they have right here. And according to history, he walked that middle aisle back and forth pacing among them, and they wondered what the young king was going to do. And he finally stood up and said, yes, you're noble. Yes, 
You control some money. Yes, you control the trade. But I alone am king. Nobody can move without my permission. Nobody can move without my say-so. Why? Because only I am of the blood. Man, we spend a lot of time living subject to things that God said are under our feet. Sickness and disease do not have authority over your life. Condemnation has no place in my life. I'm telling you, you've let the devil rise up and try to tell you, no, you're nothing but a boy. You can't do it. But I need you to understand today that God said, no, you are blood of my blood. Flesh of my flesh. We are not weaker. We are not lower class. I know we don't fit in everywhere. And there's a reason for that. My daddy isn't like the world's daddy. I'm telling you, we aren't like anybody else. That's why we talk different, walk different, dress different. There's a reason the Bible talks about walking worthy. Why? Because where I walk, I am a child of the Most High God, the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Oh, somebody better praise his name today. I know the enemies come at you. I know all these things have come at you, and you don't have to take it. My God, you don't have to take it. Guilt and shame, uh, they can't mix it up with somebody who's got the blood. All these different curses in your family line, uh, uh, that blood broke every curse. There's certain apostolics who, for whatever reason, panic. Oh, somebody has a demon. There's a bad spirit. Oh, what am I going to do? Don't you know that even the devil in hell is subject to you? The Bible says, and I know he's not repented to the point of salvation. Don't misunderstand me. But, hey, even the devil's repented of killing Jesus. Why? Because the Bible says the first time there's a prophecy about Jesus, it says, hey, I'm going to have him under his feet. But then the Bible says because of this salvation and everything he's done for us, you know what? It's not just Jesus who has the devil under his feet, but every child, every son and daughter of the Most High God. If you are not baptized, today is the day to get baptized. Listen, my father's name was Rito Suarez, so my name is Andrew Suarez. I bear the name of my father. I want to be a child of God, then I better bear the name of the eternal father. I need the name of Jesus in my life, and the only way to get it is in that water. Well, let me take it a step further. If you study the Old Testament, every, we know the Old Testament was type and shadow of things to come. You study the Old Testament, you find out about God's glorious plan in the new. You could not go to the tabernacle. You could not go where the presence of God is without first stopping at the labor. The priests offered the sacrifice, man. They got dirty. They got bloody. And they had to go there and clean themselves at the labor. And when they walked away in that water, that water was mixed with blood. In the same way now when you get baptized in the name of Jesus, the Bible says you've been baptized into his death. The Bible says you put on Christ. Man, when you go into that water, you become one who has the blood of the most high God that washes away every filthy stain. You have that blood that breaks every curse. You have that blood who washes away all our sins. Stand to your feet today and just thank him for the waters of baptism. Oh, give him a little bit more.
and we walk around the subject because we still don't understand all that God did for us. And I wish I knew this verse in English. I know it in Spanish. Amen. But the Bible says, Colossians 2.14, and blotting out the handwriting of the ordinance said what, which was against us, which was contrary to us, took it out of the way, nailing it to the cross. Having spoiled principalities and power, he made a shoe of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Man, let's pretend me and Caleb get into a fight. And so it's the old days when we fight, and somehow God gives me a miracle, and I beat him. If this is the old days, I would have taken a trophy. Bro, stop. <laughs> Let me give you a two coat. <laughs> I, I would have taken that trophy, and I would have put it on a post or put it on a stick, and I would have carried it around town saying, yeah, I beat that sucker up, man. I took him out. In the same way, there was the devil, and he had in his hands every sin and every failure of our lives. He had in his hands the power to send us to hell, the power to keep us bound up and tied up. It was right there in his hands. And when Jesus died on that cross and said, well, give me some of that. And he hammered it to that cross, picked it up, and walked among the spiritual world saying, yeah, I got the power, and you don't. They belong to me and not to you. They're under my authority devil and not yours we are not bound we are not chained up oh he paid the price for our freedom he paid the price to make us something new in him all things pass away all things are made new about I think the year was 2011. God had just started teaching me about the gift of discernment of spirits. I, I still didn't really understand it, how it worked and all that. And I'm standing in the pulpit at my church, and a man, he was off here about midway through. Yeah, I'm looking at you in the blue shirt. I'm just going to use you. <laughs> he, he was about there, and as I'm preaching, I could see the man, and I'd come back around, and sometimes when I looked, there was something tall and dark, kind of bear-hugging him from behind. And, and, and I'd look away, and then it was gone, and it took me a while to realize, no, nope, Andrew, that's a demon. I went to that man after the, uh, uh, during the altar call, and I asked him if he wanted to be saved. And, and he cried, and as I got close, that demon smiled at me because that demon thought that he had authority and power that he didn't have. I talked to that man, and I led him through repentance. And when I led him through repentance, that thing still didn't let him go. Who wants to be a volunteer? Brother Jesse, get over here. <laughs> now, our baptismal tank, you can come up here. Just like yours, you got to step down into the water. And, but in, in our tank, like, I actually, you can stay up there. You actually have to be in the water, the person baptizing. And so I saw that spirit that whole time I was dealing with the man. That thing was just behind him, arms around him, smiling at me. We prayed repair of repentance, things still there. Work with him, whatever, things still there. Finally, we get to the time where he wants to get baptized. I get down into the water. I look up, and there it is. The man's ready to come down, but there's that spirit. Hands locked, not letting him go. But as the man took a step down into that water, Man, that demon couldn't keep walking. He couldn't keep going. He went down into the water. That demon had to stay up here. When I put him down in Jesus' name and came back up, man, there was no demons but angels there around him. I'm telling you, we got the true blue real stuff here. That blood will break every chain of sin in your family. That blood will wash away everything that you think won't let you go. I'm telling you, standing here in this altar, I know my sins and I know my record. But I also know that the blood has washed all things away. Yeah. 
So when I step to the house of God, I come here every Sunday, and I'm sorry, I know it's ever before me. Some people don't like it when you talk about it. I still know that I sin. I still know that I struggle. I still know every day that I'm just flesh and blood, and I live only by his grace. And when I come here, I don't come here ashamed. I know I got sin, but, bro, I don't come here ashamed saying I don't know if I'm going to worship and I don't know if I'm going to get involved. Man, I, I just I don't feel good enough. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 19, having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Now, let, let me give you a picture real quick. We know from the Psalms that the Bible says that the sun and moon declare his glory continually. We know that there's angels there continually talking, uh, worshiping him, saying, holy, holy, holy. We know about the four creatures and all that stuff. All that's happening around the throne in heaven. But you and me, who are we? The Bible says, though, even though we're nothing, if we got that blood, we can push that choir to one side. We can move other things out of the way and just sit down on that throne and say, Jesus. Stop running scared. The devil doesn't have power. Your sin doesn't have power. Oh, I'm telling you, he's won the fight for you already. Some of you still ain't getting it. Let me put it to you another way. The Bible says in the time, the, the original Passover, the angel of death was going to come through the land of Egypt and kill the firstborn of every family. The only those who could escape that death were those who had the blood of a lamb on their doorpost. You need to get it in your head, in your heart, and in your spirit right now. You need to understand the people in that house were not holy nor perfect. There was sin in the house. There was shame in the house. There, there was different problems in the house. But when that angel of death walked by, he wasn't there checking everybody's record. He was checking to see where the blood was applied. It's not about you being perfect in and of yourself. It's about the blood on your life. When angels and demons look at us, they don't come and see, well, he, he's holy and he's perfect and he's got a right attitude and this and that. No, nah, man, they're looking who your father is. They're looking where the blood is. I'm telling you now, we got authority and power we don't understand because we haven't understood. We got a father who's unlike any other. feeling too at home. I see Brother Eli has a big clock there that I need to hurry up. <laughs> I'm walking with my wife one day, and we live, there's a lot of demonic activity, witches, vampires, and different things in our area, and there was a group of vampires who were going to cross our way. Demon, they, they, they were demon possessed and other issues, and I, I mean, I knew it halfway down the block, and as we're walking, I, I was going to let them walk by first, but as we start walking, the group's about to come. One man put out his foot to walk, and it just stood there. I don't have balance, but he just stood there. I'm talking, he couldn't keep going. My wife, as she is, said, why don't you guys just walk by? And they answered back, we can't until you pass. <laughs> There's a reason the Bible calls us a peculiar people. There's a reason the Bible calls us a royal priesthood. Man, we aren't like anybody else. We're the sons and daughters of the Most High God. I got to hurry this thing up. So you showed up here today beat up and tired and all this stuff. And you need to realize right now, you need to have faith in who you are through Jesus. God does not want you constantly living in fear, constantly living, feeling like you're not good enough, constantly feeling like I, I'd like to ask God for that, but I know he won't answer because when I was eight years old, I struggled and fell in that way. The 
Bible says no greater love. And forgive me, I don't know it exactly in English, but there's no greater love than this, than one would put their life for their friends. He laid himself out for us. He bled for us. So that you and I could not just keep living the same way, but feeling bad about it. He did what he did, that you and I could be made a new creation. That those old things could pass away and all things be made new. Your habits, your thoughts, your feelings, and who you are. A few years ago, I was constantly having problems with my stomach. I had them since I was a little kid. And I, I, my stomach ruptured multiple times. The doctor, every time it's happened, has told me, I don't understand why you're not dead. And I, I'd vomit blood, and this, I'm talking from when I was a little kid, this is just years upon years upon years upon years of this same thing. A few years ago, I go to the doctor, and he's trying to work on it. Got a new doctor. He's awesome. He's the only doctor I ever knew who studied my case when I wasn't there paying him. <laughs> but he, we go through different medications, different treatments we can do, and he said, I, I got one more thing for you I'd like you to try. It was a supplement. Um, I, I can't remember the name at the moment, but that supplement, he said, listen, you're, th you're going to have to pay for it. It's a little expensive. It's not going to be covered by insurance, but try it. So well, what does it do? He says, well, well, when you take this, it'll, it'll widen your veins so that your blood can flow more freely. I'm like, well, I'm vom vomiting blood, so is that really a good idea? <laughs> and he says, well, listen, you need to understand that if we widen your veins, wherever the blood flows, the blood heals. And where that blood flows, it'll also strengthen. And I'm telling you, you came here today feeling unworthy and feeling like you're a sinner, feeling like you're filthy, feeling like you're not good enough. Let the blood flow over you today. That blood will heal. That blood will strengthen. I'm going to ask you to step up to this altar. I'm going to ask you to come forward. you feel far away from God, the Bible says that we've been brought close by this blood. If you feel dirty, the Bible says that he cleanses us by this blood. Old verse, everybody knows it. Moreover, the law entered that the offense might abound. But where sin abounded, if you know it, say it in a loud voice, grace did much more abound. If you want baptized, today's the day to get baptized. One of the elders will take you over. Today's the day. But if you're here today struggling with condemnation and just feeling not good enough or any other such thing, just raise your hand high and don't hit me with that proud stuff. God wants to set you free of it today. Raise your hand high. One of the elders of the other people who are designated the prayer are going to come lay hands and God is going to do something right now in you and break those chains of condemnation and set you free. God's going to do it in you right now. In the name of Jesus, oh Lord God, I pray, I plead your blood over this whole house. God, we break every chain in the name of Jesus. We tear down the strongholds. God, I pray against fear and doubt, condemnation, and all the other things that keep us bound up. Everything is subject in the name of Jesus. We bind these things and cast them out of their lives, never to return now. I pray, oh Lord God, open the heavens and flow out with hope and faith over your people with a revelation of who they are in you. I pray, oh Lord God, give us peace for every storm. Give us the joy of the Lord in a place of sadness. I pray, God, make us strong where we are weak. Flow and minister us, oh God, in the deepest pits of our soul. God, like David wrote, heal our soul, for we have sinned against you. I pray, flow over us, oh Lord. And like you wrote through the Apostle Paul, may we be made whole in you, who is the head of all power and principle. In the name of Jesus, now minister to your people.
the blood of Jesus is here right now. Let's go. 
It flows throughout the body of Christ.
close your eyes and minister to the Lord in praise and worship as God is touching hearts.
at least one that's going to be baptized in Jesus name this morning and I want to say to everybody here if you're here today and you've never been baptized in Jesus name and if there's a desire in your heart to be baptized I want you to make your way up here to the pulpit area we have a couple of elders that'll come and minister to you here and talk to you about it because the power of the blood is applied at baptism it's a process of the new birth and after we've been baptized in Jesus name and filled with the Holy Ghost uh, we access the blood through our ongoing repentance through our ongoing prayer after you've been baptized in Jesus name you can call on the blood to wash again and to cleanse You know what this whole thing called church boils down to? It boils down to whether or not the blood does what it says that it does. And I am absolutely convinced that the blood of Jesus does what it says it's going to do. And the people of God need to be absolutely convinced that the blood does what it does. Hallelujah. Lift your voice and just begin to worship God and begin to thank Him for the power of the blood. Come on, those of you that have called on his name, you got to accept that washing. You got to speak it forth by faith. I believe the blood. I believe the blood does what the book says it does. I rebuke every spirit of condemnation in the name of Jesus. Lord, let the power of the blood and the power of the name flow in this house today. Let's reach out to the Holy Ghost. Come on, worship him, church, all over this auditorium. Just praise God. Let's worship his name.
Jesus. rejoice with this one that's being baptized in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. you this afternoon. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Let's be back in prayer tonight. Service at 6, prayer 5.30. The Holy Ghost will continue.